It's time to spring into something delicious with HelloFresh. Every week you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients with recipes delivered to your door. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code MLM16 at hellofresh.com slash MLM16. Theranos wasn't just a Silicon Valley startup that miserably crashed and burned. It was downright fraud. But what about other tech startups? What about that $400 juice machine and the hologram smartphone bracelet that never existed? Were they scams too, or genuine businesses that had fatal flaws keeping them from making it onto the market? Hello everyone, and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to talk about two tech failures and how one of them supposedly embodies the overindulgence of Silicon Valley itself. What is this? It's a Juicero. Wow. This episode is full of all the juicy details, so let's get into it and start with, no pun intended, oh wow, I didn't plan that, that was great though, but let's start with Juicero and the strange path its founder had taken. Those of you that know of Juicero probably know it as that $400 juice machine with packets that you could just easily squeeze by hand. However, this machine managed to get over $100 million in investment. So how? Is there something more to this juicer that we're not seeing? Let's take a deeper look. Now, Doug Evans is a co-founder of Juicero. He suffered a great loss in 1994 when his mother died of cancer. And soon after his father passed from heart disease. When he was diagnosed with type two diabetes not long after, he resolved to live a healthier life. A little while later, Evans met Denise Mari, who introduced him to veganism. Mari apparently told Evans about cold pressed juice and the two of them went into business together. Organic Avenue was born in 2002, opening its first street level shop in 2006. It became big in New York City. Organic Avenue had their own pop-up shop during New York City Fashion Week in what was then known as Alice Tully Hall. Gwyneth Paltrow promoted their products on Goop and former Vogue editor of special events even began doing Organic Avenue classes. And yeah, that's exactly what you're thinking. What kind of classes? Well, Organic Avenue wasn't just a place to drink juice, but they were famous for detox cleanses as well as organic and raw food workshops and uncooking classes. Nowadays, I'd classify them as an all around trendy health food blog that seemed to promote junk science, though I'll get to more of that in just a moment. For the time being, Organic Avenue was incredibly popular. According to the New York Times, after the 2008 economic recession, people that may have been a little hesitant to splurge on five days at a spa could choose a more reasonably priced indulgence like a five-day juice cleanse. Now, these juice cleanses were still incredibly expensive. Their juice was $9 a pop, but for a wealthy person in New York City, it was apparently an affordable luxury. One nutritionist told Observer that she loved how convenient they were, and she often brought her clients to one of their chains to prove that healthy grab-and-go meals do exist. She also claimed that their cashew hemp milk was a delicious alternative to almond milk, and it was incredibly hard to find. However, the more the competition grew, the less of a niche market Organic Avenue was. Juice Press came along in 2010, and by 2012, new high-pressure processing tech gave cold-pressed juice a shelf life of more than a month. Apparently, this was shunned by purists like the founding team of Organic Avenue, as the New York Times puts it, which only pushed them out of the market faster. Suja, Blueprint Cleanse, all of them became competitors. And though Organic Avenue generated about $20 million in revenue, there was barely any profit. One former investor said that the good old days never existed, implying this had consistently been the case. High real estate costs in New York City and a struggle to make a profit started to become too much for Organic Avenue. They actually became so well-known for food waste that dumpster divers posted about them online. One user on a meetup board in 2013 claimed that their friend worked at an Organic Avenue on Lexington and they always have expiring juices when they close. By 2015, Organic Avenue slowed to a grinding halt. Employees weren't paid for their last week of work, bills to suppliers weren't paid, some checks that were given out were bouncing. It was an utter mess. Organic Avenue announced that they were closing all of their stores and well, that was that. So why would I say that they promoted junk science? There's nothing wrong with delicious juice, right? Well, despite their stores having been closed in 2015, the website is actually still up and running, publishing some questionable articles. For example, they recently posted an article recommending various weight loss patches. They compared weight loss patches to nicotine patches and claimed that skin absorption allows people to get the maximum benefit from weight loss ingredients by bypassing the digestive organs. 
The author of this article is CPD or Continuing Professional Development Certified and the CEO of an advertising and marketing services agency. So he's not a doctor. On the other hand, Medical News Today says that the efficacy of weight loss patches hasn't really been proven and they haven't been approved by the FDA. This is a longstanding issue. It's not as if these patches are revolutionary. The FDA has been calling them the newest weight loss gimmick since 1988. If these patches were as fantastic as they actually claim to be, then it doesn't seem like it should take over four decades to figure it out. Some sources have referred to them as downright snake oil, and on numerous occasions, the Federal Trade Commission has charged weight loss patch manufacturers with fraud and false advertising. Nonetheless, Organic Avenue has jumped on the weight loss patch bandwagon on their website, and they've advertised and reviewed a variety of supplements. But now let's move on to the juicero of it all. What happened next for Doug Evans? As Organic Avenue fell apart, Doug Evans was working on an entirely different way to compete with the other cold pressed juices of the world, Juicero. According to Evans, when Organic Avenue was sold in 2012, it passed into the hands of its financial investors and soon he was missing the cold pressed juice and wanted to find a juicer to do it. 12 prototypes later, the $700 Juicero was born. Other sources claim that the major stake in Organic Avenue wasn't sold until 2013, but Either way, it was around this time that Evans had a foot out the door and into the Juicero world. In October, 2013, he was able to raise $4 million in funds, then an additional $15.8 million just six months later. Finally, by early 2015, Evans raised a total of $120 million for this startup. Though Doug Evans is from New York, not Silicon Valley, it was in fact Silicon Valley Titans that invested in him. Google Ventures, Double Bottom Line Ventures, Artist Ventures, Thrive Capital, Vast Ventures, and Kleiner Perkins, which started Campbell's Soup, were among those that made deals with Juicero. According to Insider, rumor had it that the CEO of Campbell's tried the juice, then ran back to cut a $10 million check. So what's so special about this juicer? It's literally just a juicer that has fruit come in pouches making cleanup easier, like a Keurig, but for juice. Well, the reason these investors were so excited and on board with Juicero wasn't just because of the fruit, but for the technology and agricultural arm involved. Insiders said that because of just how much money Juicero raised, this hinted that they planned on growing and supplying fresh produce around the world. Plus, Juicero could connect to the internet and even had a mobile app so that customers could scan their pouches and see where the fruit came from and when it had been packaged. A juicer is one thing, but their tech is another. Not to mention, Juicero made sure the machine could only squeeze out juice bags with a Juicero QR code, so you couldn't just stick any juice pouch in it. Supposedly, buying into Juicero meant buying into the way fruits and vegetables are delivered. After all, when you buy fruits in grocery stores, they're often picked a week or more before the store actually receives it. Juicero packets like Organic Avenue juices may expire quickly, but they claimed that it would be a lot fresher. And so with a hefty $700 price tag, Juicero was launched in March, 2016, with each bag costing between five to $8. After the device launched, it originally had the support of Dr. Oz and Goop, which again, should tell you a bit about the product, quite frankly, if you've spent any amount of time on my episodes at all, I do not like either of these two. Doug Evans said he envisioned doing for juice what Steve Jobs did for Apple and the benefits of having fruits and vegetables were talked up by the company and their supporters. Doug Evans even told the New York Times that organic cold pressed juice is rainwater filtered through the soil and the roots and the stems and the plants. You're getting this living nutrition. It's like drinking the nectar of the earth. Yet no matter how fresh or delicious the juice was, the juicer itself was honestly laughable. Even Bloomberg pointed out that you literally don't need the expensive machine itself to make juice from the pouches. And I kind of find it funny that they had the foresight to make sure their machine wouldn't be able to work with other juice pouches, but they didn't have the sense to make sure it was a necessity. Why not just sell the pouches and make them accessible to everyday people that wanted a delicious $5 juice? Like that sounds like a business plan that like has more longevity to me, but no, so you could see how this is gonna fall apart, right? So people obviously and very quickly realized how unnecessary the machine itself was. After just a few months, the price of the juicer nearly half to $400 instead of 700. Doug Evans was replaced by Jeff Dunn as the chief executive and Juicero itself claimed that they were working on further reductions to the price of the press and the pouches. Jeff Dunn practically begged people not to squeeze the bags with their hands and said that the value of Juicero was more than just a glass of cold pressed juice, insisting that they were compromising the food security, consistent pressing and data that the juicer brings. But for the customers, this was not enough and they wanted a refund. Dunn claimed that less than 5% of customers actually took him up on his full refund offer, but the company struggled all the same. 
Hardly a year after launching, about 25% of the workforce was laid off and the machine's price was cut to less than $300. Apparently, Doug Evans compared Juicero to a Tesla Roadster, a car that was expensive at first, but decreased with time. Critics just were not buying it. Articles went from calling out this overpriced, ridiculous Silicon Valley overindulgence to the entire juice industry themselves. Quartz came out with an article that said juice had become one of the pillars of the modern wellness movement, along with quote, whatever else Goop is hawking this week. They called Juicero an expensive, useless invention that frankly seemed emblematic of juice itself. While I'm not about to say you can't drink juice or anything, I've mentioned how the benefits of juice or even powdered fruit can be greatly overstated. See the Juice Plus MLM episode for reference. If you truly want fiber and nutritious qualities from fruits and vegetables, you're better off eating those foods than any form of juicing. Sure, juice is better than no fruits and vegetables at all, but it's largely overhyped along with other luxury health trends. Health claims are not, Juicero was, well, out of juice. In September, 2017, about a year and a half after opening, they announced that they were shutting down operations. Juicero by this point had become a bit of a laughing stock with various articles circulating around the internet calling them a Silicon Valley fail. They were the epitome of more money than cents. And well, it was funny to watch. People posted pictures of Capri Sun, those juice pouches on Twitter, and they said it was concept art from Juicero's R&D meeting. Investors may have seen something useful in Juicero, but many obviously did not. However, this is not the end of Doug Evans and strange health and wellness excursions either. Just after Juicero shut down, Doug Evans went to Burning Man and allegedly went on a 10 day cleanse of drinking only raw water. In other words, unfiltered and untreated water. He started paying more than $5 a gallon for it from a brand called Live Water. Mukande Singh, formerly known as Christopher Sanborn, founded Live Water and claims that it's better for you than any other water out there. In marketing materials, Singh is featured sitting naked in front of hot springs cross-legged as he explains his water to the New York Times. Tap water, you're drinking toilet water with birth control drugs in them, he says. Chloramine, and on top of that, they're putting in fluoride. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but it's a mind control drug that has no benefit to our dental health. There is no scientific evidence that fluoride is a mind control drug, but plenty to show that it aids dental health. As for at-home treatments like the reverse osmosis filter, he says this, you're going to get 99% of the bad stuff out, he said, but now you have dead water. He said real water should expire after a few months, his does. It stays most fresh within one lunar cycle of delivery, he said. If it sits around too long, it'll turn green. People don't even realize that because all their water's dead, so they never see it turn green. Live Water sells its product at Rainbow Grocery for $40 for two and a half gallons and $15 per refill. A Rainbow Grocery shift manager told the New York Times that the water has a smooth mouth feel and vaguely mild sweetness. This off the grid hunt for spring water isn't exactly new though. At this point in 2017, it was all the rage and trending. Doug Evans went spring hunting with friends and admitted that he would literally trespass across private property late at night in attempts to find one. Another company called Zero Mass Water also raised over $20 million in venture capital around this time. They install systems that allow people to collect water from the atmosphere around their homes. Although Doug Evans is not the founder of these raw water companies, he's become heavily involved in the movement. And in interviews, he's been pretty aggressive when asked about his past too. In early 2018, Vice released a five minute video explaining what we've talked about thus far, how Juicero was supposed to be the next big thing, how famous people such as Kobe Bryant, Ivanka Trump, and Oprah promoted it, and how it was a solution for rich people that's worse than their problem. Vice said that Evans's new obsession was raw water. And when asked about Juicero, he claimed that his dreams were shattered and that Juicero was killed in the first inning. After all, they did have some massive names in the investment world backing them. The vice interviewer, William, then asked Evans the following. Why do you think people are wrong when they say Juicero is the embodiment of Silicon Valley access? Evans claims that anyone saying that doesn't understand what the mission was, the facts, and how any new tech starts off expensive. They got stuck in a narrative, he says. Yet when Evans was asked to elaborate about what the media got wrong about the company and give details as to why people were wrong, he says, it do- It's not even worth my breath. Evans even tells William that he's going to count to three before he walks away as if he's scolding a child, which doesn't really seem like a rational response when he's being asked reasonable questions. I- I'm gonna count to three and I'm gonna, walk, I'm gonna walk away. The fact is that if some of my sources did get something wrong about how Juicero was formed and fell apart, I'm absolutely willing to listen. 
But when Evans just says they got everything wrong and then just refuses to explain, it doesn't really give himself any credibility or believability. If the media is that wrong, then why not tell us how? Frankly, it just doesn't make him look good. He seems like he's just chasing fads to peddle to the rich. And if that's not the case, I'm not sure why he wouldn't make any attempt to vindicate himself. At the end of the interview, Evans claimed he's being recruited by many different companies, but he wants to be sure his next thing really fits him. Because of his latest obsession, many believe he's entering the raw water game. And hey, there's nothing wrong with enjoying spring water, but raw water, it's kind of a different thing. While Doug Evans and Life Water may promote this as more beneficial than other waters, their language has disturbed people like Dr. Donald Hensrud, the director of the Healthy Living Program at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. He told the New York Times that water treatment is a safety measure and to remove that, you risk drinking E. coli bacteria, viruses, parasites, and other carcinogenic compounds that are found in untreated water. Another article, this one from the Washington Post, says that the raw water craze is essentially attempting to undo one of the greatest public health and sanitation achievements in US history. They also point out how while raw water enthusiasts criticize fluoride, they neglect to mention that arsenic is also naturally occurring in the water. And if you're not properly testing or sanitizing water, but instead just trespassing on private land to harvest it, then that's something you might miss. Multiple reputable sources argue that access to clean drinking water should be a human right, and the number of lives saved because of water sanitation can't be understated. Yet everyone from raw water adopters to conspiracy theorist Alex Jones claims that fluoride is a deathly toxic chemical that was added to the water to make people more docile. And of course, to turn the fricking frogs gay. Now, if Alex Jones would rather drink unfiltered water, that's his choice. I'm certainly not going to stop him. But raw water as a product has the potential to be incredibly dangerous. And if Doug Evans starts selling it, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised given how he's seemingly promoted pseudoscience in the past, but you know, I'd be equally as disgusted that he still decided to go forward with that. Now, before we continue on to talk about the company called Secret, which is spelled C-I-C-R-E-T, because of course it had to be, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsors. And also I would like to thank myself for not falling for any of these damn tongue twisters because raw water, the whole time I was like, Wawa, like, let's go get a Wawa. And it, like, I don't know why mentally the entire time I go, oh, while well, raw water. And I was like, oh, well, wa water. And I'm like, oh my God, help me. So I'm so sorry if a Wawa slips in there. It has been in the back of my head the entire time while I was recording this section. So I'm so sorry. Anyway, ad read, then secret. Everyone loves an easy way to save some money. And Mint Mobile has the perfect one to help with your savings goals they can help you cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month. And how do they pull off this pure magic you might ask? Well, Mint Mobile is the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, and they pass that savings on with a banana starting rate of just $15. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data on the nation's largest 5G wireless network. Plus you get to keep your phone, your number, and all your existing contacts. And with Mint Mobile, you can choose the amount of monthly data that's right for you and stop paying for data you don't use. I've been using them for, oh my God, a year and a half at this point, almost two years. And I have had zero problems. I got a new number, a new phone, a new everything, and they have been nothing but swell to me. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash MLM. That's mintmobile.com slash MLM. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash MLM. Paying off high interest debt can feel discouraging. You keep making payments, but your interest basically cancels it all out. Well, Upstart can help you pay down that debt to get back to living your life. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan and you can do it all online. Rather than looking at only your credit score, Upstart considers other factors as well, like your current employment, income, and your credit history, all to find you a smarter loan rate. You can check out rates online without impacting your credit score for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to consolidate high interest debts, maybe pay off your credit cards, or get some money to start a new project. Upstart is here to help. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash MLM. That's upstart.com com slash MLM. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash MLM. 
While Juicero may be the epitome of Silicon Valley overindulgence, this next company is the embodiment of what happens when you overestimate technology. The Secret Bracelet was created by CN2P, a company based in France and founded by Pascal Pommier, the CEO, along with Fabien Noble. When their concept was unveiled in 2014, many people loved it. The bracelet was supposed to allow you to have a smartphone projected onto your skin whenever you wanted. It looked unreal, like something out of a science fiction movie. And to some extent, it was unreal. After all, this was only a concept idea, not a genuine product. Still, a secret seemed to insist that this tech wasn't all that far away. They unveiled a prototype the following year in 2015, and in 2016, they told the secret channel that they reached 100% of their funding goal. In various interviews, they also claimed that the future is the screen on the skin, even though secret wasn't fully complete yet. And it certainly seemed like a smart idea, in theory. However, they reported that CN2P had already tried to raise an Indiegogo for the secret bracelet before, but they only raised $1,300 of their $500,000 goal. They claimed that this was because people were pre-ordering the bracelet and he would not be able to deliver it if we didn't reach the goal. Now their Indiegogo page shows the closed campaign and for some reason, the video link to it is the movie Titanic in five seconds. I have no idea why this is linked like that, but it seems oddly inappropriate. Plus, this looks like they did the same thing with the Secret Messenger app, which also had one backer pledge of $15 before it was closed or shut down. It's not clear on Indiegogo which one came first, though critics have said that the app came first, he dropped it, then pivoted to the bracelet. Regardless, this did not stop them from funding their project in the long haul. In 2016, Guillaume Pomé told their YouTube audience that thanks to the viewers and investors, they reached their goal. The secret bracelet was coming soon, or was it? What made Guillaume and CN2P's new collection strategy so shady is the fact that they did it through their own website. You see, Indiegogo has refunds, standards, it's third party. And for Guillaume, they were seemingly getting in the way. Instead, if you donate directly to CN2P, they have control of your money and allegedly they implemented a no refund policy. Now, it didn't matter if they couldn't deliver on their promises on Indiegogo because CN2P found another way to collect those half a million dollars for their bracelets. Still, they promised donors that if you gave them $250, you'd have it in hand around the end of 2016. Guillaume assured the public that the company was doing well. He told one source, Hypertext, that they were working with a manufacturer of lasers and Pico models and that their second proof of concept was coming soon. However, when it came to shipments going out in 2016, he told Hypertext a different story from what was previously believed. They'd open for pre-orders at the end of the year if they were on schedule. A lot of maybes in the sentence. One moment, it seemed like the product would be on its way and had a deadline. Then after reading the interview, it sounded as if another couple years might pass before anyone is actually wearing the thing. Guillaume also addressed the messaging app he created in the past and told Hypertext the following. The main mistake we made was putting the two products in the same campaign. We put the secret app, a secure messaging app and the secret bracelet together. To me, it makes a lot of sense because when we were developing Secret, we didn't have the money for a cloud system. So we thought about inventing a hard drive that would contain all your personal data that you carried around with you. We said, okay, let's put this hard drive around your wrist as a bracelet. This was initially the first proposal for the Secret Bracelet to hold all the data for the Secret app directly on your arm. Then I thought we could put a computer on your wrist with a screen using a Pico projector. It made sense to have them in the same campaign, but we weren't clear enough and people didn't understand. At the end of the interview, Guillaume said that crowdfunding was their only source of money and they weren't about to let people down. However, one of their most known critics on the internet said that Secret wasn't just delayed, but he doubted that they really had anything to show. A couple months after Guillaume told their YouTube channel that Secret had been funded, their most known critic, a YouTube channel known as Captain Delusion, came out and debunked the entire thing, saying that it wasn't even possible to begin with. The video garnered a total of about 10 million views. Captain Disillusion made several key points stating that projectors aren't magic. A tiny light source like the one that Secret uses would do horribly in extreme weather conditions and on certain skin tones. Plus with the angle of the projection and thanks to the inverse square law, the bottom half of the image would be faded. Or if they use lasers as Secret later claimed they were going to do, then it would be extremely dangerous for your skin. Their proximity sensor also seemed impractical because while that might work for simple button presses, there's almost no way it could work for complicated gestures. Captain Disillusion makes some other important points throughout their video, like how in their prototype video, Secret never actually shows the bracelet itself. It looks as if they're holding a Pico projector against their skin. And even so, he orders one to see if it would come in and surprise, it didn't. 
He said that after his video came out, a few things changed for the company. They made a few more updates, eventually removed the timeline from their website entirely and stopped soliciting money. As of writing this, their website doesn't even load anymore, at least it didn't for me. And the only way to access their old site is through the Wayback Machine. I'm not sure if Secret saw his video and did this to cover themselves, but I have to say Captain Disillusion's video debunking the secret is well done and it garnered a lot of attention to the scam. So if it was in response, I wouldn't be surprised. But let's get back to the Wayback Machine where you can see the most recent evolution of Secret. It's clear that the design is clunky, but there's no more timeline and their updates seem full of excuses. One in summer of 2017 is just to say that they're still working on things. Their most recent update in March of 2018 simply states that if they have any more information, they'll share it. Clearly they don't have anything new to say. While Guillaume can say that this was all just a misunderstanding about how advanced they are, the fact that Secret used those videos to sell people on product is kind of disgusting. If they were incapable of delivering something that advanced, it only seems logical to make that extremely clear. But instead of saying the technology isn't just there yet and this was only a concept, Guillaume kept insisting that it would happen eventually and he believed in the company. The whole thing was incredibly misleading at best and a downright scam that allegedly had no intention of delivering at worst. In 2019, the idea of it being a complete and utter lie seemed certain. After all, there were no more updates, no more empty promises, no more videos from the company. High Tech Gazette claimed they received 7 million in total, but as far as I've seen in my research, it looks like they may have added an extra zero as that number is actually closer to 700,000. Yet Secret wasn't even alone in their idea. The Rytop Projection Watch was also launched around the same time and also started gaining attention on Indiegogo. Their campaign stayed on the crowdfunding platform where it raised over $1.4 million with a similar effect. The founders' names, locations, and promises kept changing and the prototypes were supposedly non-existent. To this day, people are still posting on the campaign page demanding a refund. Another projection watch, iHand, also took in over half a million dollars from people on Crowdfunder in 2016. People apparently really want these devices, enough to keep investing in them and hoping for the best. Now, this isn't to say that this technology will never happen, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. Still, their concept videos were certainly well done. Well done enough to be stolen from companies that are supposedly selling working projector bracelets from China. These companies seem to take secret footage and photos of Fitbits to sell cheap and poorly made generic smart bracelets that don't have a projector at all. While I'm hopeful that we'll be skeptical the next time a projection bracelet is coming along, I guess we'll have to wait and see what the next latest and greatest technology breakthrough is gonna be. But with all of that being said, that's where we're going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new today from juice to raw water to projector watches, quite a variety today. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing so you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I also wanna give a quick thank you to my patrons and everyone who supports me over on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs. And thank you so much. You guys are an amazing group of folks to talk to. I've been really enjoying our conversations. And as per usual, all the pet photos. That's probably my favorite section in the server. So thank you all so much for joining me for today's episode. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.